All right, hello everybody. We're back in the shop and we're getting started with a new project. Uh, this is a PAU 27%. I can tell you without my glasses on. Uh, it's a 27% Pitts Challenger and I've really been looking forward to this. It's been sitting in a box in my garage for about the last, uh, I don't know, four or five weeks. And I haven't been able to open it. I haven't been able to start it because I've been dealing with all the problems at the website. You know, Sleepy C and I have been dealing with it. So uh, this has been sitting out in my garage. I've been dying to get started with it. I've got <clears throat> a relatively new, lightly used DA50 with a smoke muffler. So that's going to be power for this uh, project. I've also got a box of MKS servos. So we'll be going through these piece by piece, talking about all the details, how they're going to be mounted, power system, all that stuff. So we're ready to get started. We're going to take it out of the box. It's already been out of the box because it's been to uh, Nick's, Nick Fredericks' shop out in Ohio for uh, Nacho Cheese Graphics. He's done a little bit of work on it. I sent it to him first. He sent it to me. So the box was already opened by him. It was unpacked, so it's not really an unboxing video because would it be fair to PAU to say that this is how it comes in the box? It's a little bit looser, I think, than it would have been from the factory. But um, I'm going to open the box, and then I'm going to open the other box. It's double boxed, which is good for the stuff inside. And we're going to show you what it comes with. All right? I'm excited. I know a little bit about it. I've talked to Hervé out at PAU. I bought this to have as a promotional thing for the website so that when we go to shows, especially over the winter, I live out in New Jersey, I'll be at the Ram Show, I'm going to have this with me, it's going to be done, and uh, I wanted something big that would get people's attention, I wanted it to be bright, I love biplanes, I tried to fix my, uh, my I, I tried to, <clears throat> before starting the website I tried to scratch my biplane itch with one of these from Hobby King, and it's fun but it's not the same as a not the same as a big one. So let's get it out of the box and take a look at it. Everybody on the site says great stuff about PAU, so I'm expecting to see good stuff. So right off the bat, we've got the fin in a bag and we've got the tail wheel and we've got some hardware. It looks like the cabanes. All looks like it's pretty heavy duty. Good quality stuff. It's all bagged. Right, we love individual bags, keeps everything organized and well protected. We've got a cowl in the back, it's fiberglass. Cutouts look like they're in good shape. The finish looks beautiful, so we're happy about that. I'm really happy to be building this. All right, we've got hardware, more hardware. Now, this is kind of a surprise. Uh, what we have is a bag of Dubro hardware. So, let's see, we have Hangar 9 push rods. Hangar 9 makes good quality stuff, so we're happy about that. I've never really had any problem with anything from Dubro, so that's, uh, that's good. This is all stuff I'm familiar with. Nothing tricky here, nothing that looks like it'll have to be replaced with better quality stuff, so I'm happy about that. The fuel tank, uh, I know a lot of guys have different feelings about uh, fuel tanks with the seam. Um, I, you know what, I've never had one crack. I know other people have. So uh, maybe we'll use this for the fuel tank, maybe we'll use it for the smoke tank. Um, I don't know, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But right now, Dubro and Hangar 9 hardware is good. Uh, let's see, we've got wheel pants. We'll take those out some other time. We've got a canopy. Canopy is nicely painted around the edges. Yeah, it looks good. The paint line is nice and clean. The paint, uh, the finish work is good. It's smoked. You guys can see that, right? Put that off on the side. We'll put it in our servo box. Now, let's take out the fuselage. This is good. All right. All right, so the, the motor box, right off the top of the bat, it's uh, got tabs and slots, so it's not going to pull out. And it's reinforced, looks like epoxy and some triangle gear, or some triangle uh, stock. So, very solid looking, very robust looking. 
It's got room for a canister if I wanted to put one in for exhaust. The monocoat's nice and tight. Now this airplane, when you get it, it's solid red. Everything is red. That's pretty much the reason I picked it. Also because PAU, we know that they're good quality stuff and all that. It's the right size. I like 50cc, personally. Um, but it's solid red, which makes it really easy to customize. And for the website, da da da, -da giantscalenews.com, that's what we had Nick do. So we'll see what he did on the wings, but fuselage looks good. I like the size. Monocoat's nice and tight, although Nick might have tightened it up, but still, we're happy about it. It's light, it's not super heavy. Put that off to the side. Hopefully I'll get the holes for the engine mounted. Uh, we'll get the holes drilled in the right spot first time. Looks like Nick threw in a DA sticker for me. We'll put that somewhere. Now the wings, got four ailerons. Got a little bling on there. <laughs> he put the airplane upside down on one wing. That's pretty cool. And uh, nice big giant scale news logo. This looks like it's the upper left wing panel. So that's cool. That'll get people's attention. Put that down. On the tail, we've got a little hint of our circle. That's our giant scale news pattern. That's our broadcast pattern. Radiating out from the antenna, letting you guys know all the best stuff about giant scale RC on the internet. It's got the rudder. It's got some PAU bling on the rudder. Oh, there's the fin. So what was that other thing I saw? Hang on. I'm confused. I'm confused. Uh, I don't know what that is. I'll have to figure that out. That's an odd... It's not the landing gear because it has spring landing gear. It's not like it has the old style pits, uh, you know, the bungee gear, you know, which would have a nice big triangle filler. This is spring gear, so I'm not sure what those little panels are, but here's the fin, here's the rudder. Together they make the vertical stabilizer, and that's pretty cool. A little PAU on there. And let's see, more giant scale news logo on the lower wing panel. Looks good. I like the size of everything. Now this airplane, truth be told, I know there's a lot of talk about 3D with everybody on the site. Ailerons don't go all the way into the fuselage. They stop, that's about uh, eight inches of open space there. So this airplane might not be the best 3D performer uh, just because the aileron effectiveness, you know, the aileron starting eight inches out from the fuselage. There's some room here where a 3D plane would have some big aileron surface to be able to control it when it's uh, zero airspeed. Um, but I don't know, we'll give it a try. I'm not the best 3D guy. I'm not a 3D guy, so we'll take it out to the field and see what we can do. But yeah, some more PAU stuff on there. Da 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 da. Now what else do we have? Have our eye struts. Eye struts because they're interplane struts. Little giantscalenews.com on there. And again, everything's uh, looks solid. Monocoat's tight, nothing super heavy, so this looks good. Now, one thing I noticed, this kind of has the, the, the belly lines of a real Pitts uh, S2. The earlier S2s, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but the original Challenger, version 1 and 2, he's on version 3 or 4 now. Um, it's the airplane that... Uh, Sean Tucker flies. The original one and two versions of the plane were modified Pitts S2S's. And the S2S, the controls for aileron and uh, elevator actually run underneath the structure of the fuselage. So those airplanes, when you see photos of them, the formers that make the outer shape of the plane go around those controls on the bottom. So they, they make it, uh, they talk about those version, or that version of the plane, the S2S, the S2Bs, S2As as having kind of a, a belly on them and that's that rounded belly that comes under the fuselage and this plane kind of replicates those lines which is kind of cool which means it's a little more scale. The newer ones 
they got rid of it. They straightened the lines like a PITS S1-11 and a PITS S2-C. They straightened out the lines. They cleaned it up a little bit by putting the controls up into the fuselage. So this is kind of cool. Me being a PITS guy, uh, I like the fact that it's kind of scale. It's got that little bit of a belly to it. So I'm stoked. We're going to get to work on it. The inside of the cockpit is painted a little bit. That's a nice touch that I would normally do if I was building it myself. So I'm happy. We're going to get to work on it. We've got the servos. We've got the engine. All we have to do is figure out, uh, it's kind of on the threshold whether or not it needs a power distribution system like a smart fly or something. I could probably get away with not doing that. Uh, the servos are not super heavy duty servos and um, it's a 50cc plane which is on the short side of needing a power system as opposed to like 100 or 150cc where you would definitely want to do something like that. But uh, I've got the radio, I've got the receiver for it, I think we have everything we're going to need so I'm going to get right to work on it. It's a PAU 27% Pitts Challenger. It's a product review and a build thread at GiantScaleNews.com. Thanks for watching.